Hello. Well, this is your first flip learning homework. So firstly, we're going to recap what we did on Wednesday with the flower. So here's some pictures of flowers here. What you need to remember is that flowers are there for sexual reproduction. And this is when we need the two gametes, so the male gametes and the female gametes to fuse in fertilization. The pollen is the male sex cell and the female X sex cell is called the ovule, which is found in the ovary and the pollen is here on the anthers. So in the lesson you all labelled this sheet, so you've got the stigma, the style, the ovary and the ovule of all the female reproductive system and that together that's known as a carpal and the anther where the pollen is made and it's held up by the filament and that is the stamen. So you should have all filled in this sheet so you've got the main definitions of all the various things and what they do. So make sure this is completed in your book. Pollination is when we get the pollen grains, which some of you had a look at in the microscope, and they land on the stigma of a new plant. And here you can see the pollen grains attached to the stigma. And this is not fertilization because it's not actually the ovule being fertilized by the pollen and the DNA at this point is not combined. So if it's the same flower itself pollination, different flower is cross pollination. So most, well, a lot of plants are adapted for insect pollination and some are adapted for wind pollination. Looking at these two flowers here, hopefully you know which one is which. This is obviously insect pollination because it's got a nice flower to attract the insects. And this is wind pollination. And we're going to talk a bit about this in a minute and how the flowers are different and why they're different. So the structure, when you had a go at the dissection, hopefully you found a lot of these different parts. You found the petals, the sepals were on the outside and they were tougher and they were there to protect the flower. You have the anthers with the pollen and then the carpal which has got all the female reproductive parts. And you're expected to know these different parts. In order to make sure you know them, you're going to have a go at doing this quiz on the lesson back, which is one of the ways I'm going to know if you watch this video. So these are the exact questions you'll have in the quiz. So structure X is the male reproductive system, so it's the stamen and the, and the filament. Pollen is made in the anther. These are different types of pollen. The ovule is here in the ovary. The parts of the flower labelled below are the stigma is X where the pollen has to land and the style is Y. Um, where does pollination occur? It's on the stigma. Remember the pollen grains land on the stigma. So pollination is a transfer of pollen from anther to stigma. And as we said, you can have insect pollination, whereby an insect is attracted to the flower by the colours, the smell, and it's after the nectar. And while doing that, it gets covered in pollen, so when it goes onto the next flower, it will pollinate that flower. Alternatively, you have wind, so the wind blows the pollen and hopefully it hits another plant, the stigma of another plant. So we're going to have a look at why they're adapted to different things. And this is a piece of work you're going to do at the start of Wednesday's lesson. So, insect pollination. Insects have to go to the flower to get the nectar. So the nectar, in a scent, attracts the insects. The sticky stigma collects the pollen off the insect. So it's located in the flower, so the insect has to climb into the flower to get the nectar. While it's doing that, it'll also get covered in pollen so that it can go onto another flower and pass the pollen onto the stigma of another flower. Anthers are inside the flower again, large brightly colored petals to attract the insects. Wind pollination looks quite a lot different. So here we have this flower, and a good idea would be to pause it now and try and work out why you think the two, one, two flowers are different. The reason is because the pollen grains are small and light in wind pollination, they're not sticky. So the wind blows the anthers, blows the pollen off. It's producing very large numbers because there's not much chance of it hitting the right flower. 
So the wind's blowing in the air, the stigma hang outside in a feathery to try and catch as much pollen as possible. Petals are small because there's no need for them to attract the insects, you just want the hanging stigma and hanging anthers to, so the wind can blow the pollen and the pollen can land on the stigma. No scent or nectary, there's no need to attract insects. insects. So we do not need to waste energy making a smell or nectar. So again, next lesson you're going to complete the worksheet on pollination so I can work out who's watched this video and who's taking it in. And then we'll have another task looking at some photographs so you can decide whether they're wind or insect pollinated flowers. And you'll make a table. So hopefully you've understood that. If it's a thumbs up for the flowers and their structure and pollination, that's great. If not, watch the video again. Remember there's going to be a little quiz at the start of the lesson just to make sure you've watched the video and you know what we're talking about. That's it for your homework. Make sure you watch it and understood.